That's a cool view there. Yeah, look at that rain over there. That's like a, it's like a tunnel. That's pretty impressive. So it's storming outside and this lets us be able to find the leaks that we have and we are actually, the boat is leaking um, from right there, the hatch, the forward hatch. It was leaking before, we just have to re it. Unfortunately, this is Tate's bed and it's, yeah, it's raining <laughs> into the boat. We caught a ton of water with all of the storm and everything outside. <laughs> Very rainy. Oh my god, we had to shed the poor lights. It lightnings a lot here in Sun Blast. Last year, we were just in the middle of storm after storm and lightning hitting everywhere, lighting up the reef, lighting up the boats. I was determined this time to take some video of it because it's so interesting. It only happens during the rainy season, which ends at the end of December. So, it's one of the places that lightning strikes the most on Earth, actually here in Panama, which is pretty incredible. And the rain that comes with it is just torrential. I'm talking, I have caught 40 gallons of rainwater in 20 minutes here, and our dinghy gets completely full. It's actually kind of dangerous because you have to keep track of it. Some days it rains a lot, and it keeps raining, and it rains at night, and then all of a sudden your dinghy is in danger of sinking. Where are we going today, Tate? We're gonna go to the outer reef and uh, swim around, do some filming. Yeah, and well, some fishing. Maybe. You know, spearfishing really changed my life. When I first started spearfishing, I was overweight and didn't get a lot of exercise. And I didn't always know what to do on the boat. You know, you're just kind of out there and if you couldn't go to land, it was kind of boring. But I got into it and I really enjoyed it. I found something that I could do every day and I loved. Going spearfishing is sort of a mix between going snorkeling and seeing all the beautiful things you can under the sea and it's part hunting where you're perfecting a technique and looking for different fish and different things that maybe you want to go and shoot at and it's also part bringing home dinner in remote places where there may not be protein available and all of these things combined brought a lot of joy into my life and it helped me get into shape and improve my fitness and improve my well-being and in some ways it's one of the biggest motivations I have while cruising it's something that is truly wonderful to me so I haven't had a lot of luck fishing this year I don't know where all the fish have gone but today we're gonna go way out to a little honey hole that I have and see if our luck can change yeah what did you shoot last time we were there? a lot that 45 pound Kubera no that was a different spot yeah. This is where I got chased by sharks.
Jengibre. 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 Okay, it's ginger. Wow, look at all this delicious stuff. So we have gasoline and rum and um, wine, beer. Awesome. So we got more gas today. The mm -hmm. veggie boat brought it. We asked him to. Yay! And that's good because it means we can go to the outer reef more. Yeah. Our two-stroke outboard uses a little bit more gas than our four-stroke. So. Right. Yay, gasolina! Since we've been out and some lost, the vegetable boat luckily has been coming every week or two weeks, usually closer to two weeks. Uh, it's really good because the vegetables here in San Blas don't last a long time because it's hot and they like seem to shrivel up pretty uh, easily. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. So we really look forward to the vegetable guy coming. Um, and it's an event. Yeah, it's definitely an event. And we, we wash everything with bleach water and let everything dry off before we bring it down below. But we also go through the vegetables in a way that we eat whatever's going bad. Obviously, you probably still do that at home, but out here it's even more important because these peppers last about four days and then they're done. I'm making Tate a rum drink with just a uh, rum, orange, and lime with all of our fresh vegetables and this papaya I'm so excited about. Look at that. Well, here aboard Sundowner, we have a recipe book, a little recipe uh, index cards, and I found my oatmeal cookie recipe, and that's what I'm about to make. I've been craving something like this, and we have eggs and all the ingredients, so. So I have everything I need right in the cabinets, and we have this really awesome bowl here. This bowl folds up and down and saves a lot of storage space. I didn't have any butter. Um, I used this coconut and sesame oil instead. Hopefully that will be okay. It's basically just flour, baking soda, baking powder, and salt mixed up in the dry stuff. And then I have um, half cup of oil, one cup of sugar, brown and white, one large egg, and a teaspoon of vanilla. And then I'm gonna stir some oatmeal in there. And you can put raisins if you want, but I don't have any raisins. And then I'm going to bake them for, um, until they're golden at 350. I oiled our little baking dish here with uh, coconut oil for these delicious cookies. And that's the finished product, and they are delicious. That uh, sesame oil and coconut oil really helped it, I think. It gives it a really unique flavor. These are the best cookies I've ever made on a board. And I'm going to treat myself to some delicious box milk and dip them in there. We have to carry this box milk because you can never get fresh milk out when we're traveling. But this stuff is actually really good. It tastes just like regular milk. You just put it in the fridge, but you don't have to. It stays on the shelf, just completely stable for, gosh, like six months. So I know I said that I only swim like every other day or every few days, but that was last time. And we had a lot more time in San Blas last time, and now I'm taking the opportunity, I think this is my fourth or fifth day swimming in a row, just because it's so beautiful and calm out here, and like come the end of December, this type of weather goes away and we can't get out there. So I'm trying to like make the most of every single day. One of the really nice things about this anchorage is that there is lots of snorkeling, and just to the left of the island that I keep showing you behind us, there's this really beautiful like coral area with lots of other places, and I don't have to take the dinghy to get there. I can actually just get my flippers and weight belt and everything and just um, swim right out there and see what's going on. I like to go in the afternoon. It's almost, um, it's like 2.30 right now, so it gets dark here at 6 o'clock or 6.30. It's so early that I'm excited to see what animals uh, await out there.
Well, that was unexpected. The Molo people came over. I was uh, typing a blog post, and they just came by. They usually do that around here, and I, I picked one. See it right there? And yeah, it was really neat. They come around. They make. They actually, that family lives on the island, like right here, and they just came out here because this is really far for most of the Molo makers, like back in the really populated areas. Um, back you know back near the shore and so you don't really see them out here too much so I was pleasantly surprised and this one we actually have one from last year from Venancio it was expensive like hmm, $60 or something but this one was like 18 and the quality looks very similar and I'm really happy that we kind of you know supported some of the local people the history of the mola is that the uh, the Kuna women adopted the tradition from the uh, Victorian English that came in the 1700s for embroidery and they started making them as bodices for their dresses that they would wear for special occasions throughout the year and then their um, their closets got full of these things and they needed they found that there was a market for them so they started selling them now they they do make them for the festivals but not so much now is more obviously a money-making thing but it's a neat tradition and it's very unique and who knows how long it will be around for and if you liked it don't forget to click the thumbs up and subscribe to our adventure thanks for stopping by and we'll see you next time yep. cheers Cheers! Cheers! Thanks to the trend! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know you got the decorations, it's so wonderful! I love it.